The Genesis GV70 is the Korean brand's fourth model and second SUV to launch here in the UK, joining its GV80 sibling in the brand's ever-expanding lineup. So the design of the exterior adheres to the brand's athletic, elegance design philosophy to create a sporty and powerful look. And that's definitely noticeable by this front end where you see lots of sharp lines and bold creases on the bonnet, working their way down and drawing your attention to this imposing using Crest Grill, which is now a trademark feature with Genesis models. This is housed between the LED quad lamps, and when you look at both of those together, they evoke the emblem, the Genesis emblem, displayed very boldly on the bonnet there. At the side, we can spot another Genesis design staple, and that's the parabolic line that starts at the front of the car with the LED quad lamps and works its way all the way across to the rear end, creating a sleek and effective look, as you can see. At the rear, we have the LED taillight start where the line ends, and I enjoy how they curve around onto the tailgate. You also get a rear spoiler and a large pane of privacy glass. Down here, you get G matrix bumpers and real twin exhausts. It's quite a bulbous looking rear end, but I appreciate how different it is to the other Genesis models in the UK lineup. Those rear ends are pretty boring, especially when compared to their striking front ends. But here, it stands out. How versatile is the practicality on offer with the G70? Let's pop open the boot to find out, but where's the button for this? For some reason, it's on the wiper. So what we're looking at here, guys, is a 542 litre capacity. If you need to fit an adult's bike, some golf clubs, or an inflatable donkey into the back here, we need to fold down that rear bench. But you can do from the boot itself. We don't have to go around to the side, which I always like to see. Just toggle the levers on either side, and that extends the boot capacity to 1,678 litres. What about the drive? Let's go and take it for a spin. Okay then guys, we're behind the wheel of the GV70 now. Much like other models in the Genesis UK lineup, this one has been subjected to exhaustive testing on Europe's most challenging roads, including the famous Nürburgring circuit, all to ensure that it's optimized to handle our weird and wonderful road services. And is this the case? Well, we'll find out in this driving section. You get that all-wheel drive system as standard, and this is nicely complemented by the optional electronically limited slip differential, and that allows you to send 100% of the torque to the rear wheels, allowing this car to keep moving in even the toughest of terrain. And there's some nice driving modes to complement this, and I'll talk about those in just a moment. But I found that the engine doesn't respond as quick as I'd like to presses of the accelerator, it's also quite slow to slow down uh, when you need that instant hit of acceleration to, uh, I don't know, shoot off a roundabout, for example. There's also three different terrain modes with the GV70 that are unique to this model in the Genesis lineup. These retune the suspension, the traction control, and the four-wheel drive system to provide extra grip on slippery surfaces and off-road conditions. So if you just flick the drive mode button down there on the center console, push that in and you're then able to select between the snow, mud and sand settings. The GV70 is around 200 grams heavier than the Q5 and this has an impact on the driving experience. The body lean around corners is quite severe. You'll often find yourself over in the corner here as the bolsters don't do a great job at holding you in place. And that's worse in the back. We've actually had problems filming this driving section as the camera keeps swaying off of its tripod when I go around uh, harsh corners there. Wind noise is nicely subdued. I can't hear any bellowing from the mirrors or the windscreen. And road noise is nicely isolated too, especially at those higher speeds and with the 21 inch alloy wheels though this is going to be made even better if you opt for the smaller 19 inch wheels. Engine noise nicely hushed around town, though when you work the engine um, as you get up to speed you still well, you will start to hear that a bit more prominently. And then you've got the artificial noise pumped into the cabin uh, when you enable the sport mode. I really don't like this, but you can turn it off in the settings. Visibility is very good. I've got a nice commanding view over the bonnet to the road ahead. The side pillars are nice and slim. Mirrors are wide. The view out the back is generous. And over my shoulder, there's no blind spot due to the windows on the rear pillars and all of this is complemented by front and rear parking sensors and a rear view camera that come as standard. When you hop in the GV70, much like when you get in a Lexus, the seats will slide back to give you ample room to hop inside the cabin. 
When you close the door, the seat and the steering wheel will adjust to your preferred position. That's always a great feature to see. There's electric adjustment for the steering wheel here, and I really like the lever wrapped around it. Doesn't feel as premium or high quality as a BMW M Sport wheel, but it's not too far off. And when you put the car in sport mode, it's got a nice bit of weight and heft to it. Behind the steering wheel, we've got an eight inch display standard. Perhaps what's drawing your eye is this massive 14.5 inch central display that comes as standard with the GV70, regardless of the trim level you go for. The graphics really sharp, guys. And I love that they've borrowed the old BMW iDrive system here in that we've got the icons nice and large on two or three different menus. They're really easy to scroll between and they're easy to glance at while on the go. One thing I do find quite distressing though in this cabin are that the climate controls are mostly integrated into a screen and they're mostly touch sensitive. You do have these knobs though for adjusting the temperature, which are nice and give you some good feedback, but to turn off and on the air con, to adjust the air intensity, to turn the heated seats and steering wheel off and on, it's all via this little display here and it does give you a nice bit of haptic feedback but it's a bit fiddly to use while on the go and it attracts quite a bit of glare as well so some of these options in intense sunlight you just won't be able to see them whatsoever so we've got a nice compartment here for your smartphone and keys and there's a couple of usb ports in there as well a couple of cup holders you get a generous center compartment here and that has a little coin tray inside a 12 volt socket and it goes down pretty far as well and the door bins i mean genesis aren't great at designing door bins it seems because none of them fit my bulky bottle but i do admit that this is larger than normal the first thing i noticed upon hopping in the back is how dim it is in the rear cabin that can be remedied by going for the optional panoramic sunroof letting lots of light into the cabin but does that come at the cost of headroom well i'm 5'8 guys as you can see lots of space to work with here so if you have passengers in the back who are six foot or over shouldn't have any issue at all legroom is a bit of a different story i can't stretch my legs out all the way this is set to my personal uh, driving configuration by the way uh, my knees are quite high up as well but i'm not uncomfortable and the back of the seats is this rather hard plastic so if the driver were to break suddenly i'm gonna hit it like that and that's quite uncomfortable the door bins are still quite narrow in the back here can't fit my bulky bottle but i do like the leather effect trim on the doors with that gorgeous stitching running its way across like the audi q5 you can slightly recline the rear bench to increase comfort on those longer journeys at the expense of boot space of course we can fold down the middle bit here and that will ward you with a couple of cup holders and a makeshift armrest and we have a bulky air conditioning cluster with a couple of usb ports so there's plenty of usb outlets here but none of them are usb-c middle seat time then let's hop over check it out it's not too bad. I mean, as always, it's going to be more ideal for shorter journeys than longer journeys. You have to straddle a rather large central tunnel, but it is wider than it is tall. That means you will be encroaching on the personal space of the other rear passengers. But for, you know, 10 minute journeys around the block, if I've got to sit in the middle, I'll be fine. I've got a great view of the infotainment system. But overall, I've had a great time test driving the GV70. And if you're after a luxury SUV for a reasonable price tag, this is a great option. If you want to find out more about this car, give our vehicle specialists a call on 01903 538 835 or just click that pop-up banner up there to book a day or time that best works for you for a quick chat. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Safe driving.